Gentlemen and the three ladies that watch this channel, it's your boy Michael, and in this video, we're going to talk about Next.js 15. What a time to be alive. We got Next.js 15 before GTA 6. In all seriousness, though, I wanted to talk about the new changes that happened with Next.js 15, the upgrade I've made to my starter kit, which is now Next.js 15, but also the future that the Vercel team shared with us on Next.js Conf. I had the privilege of being in Next.js Conf. It was a great time. Maybe I'll do a separate video on my recap. If you follow me on Twitter, you know I literally speak run through SF. It was such a great time. Glory to God. But in all seriousness, one of the things that uh, I see a lot of, I watched a couple recap videos on people talking about Next.js 15. The one part that a lot of people missed is the future bet that the Next.js team and the Vercel team are making. Partial pre-rendering is the big bet that they're making. It's the future in their eyes that, they're, that we as uh, developers and the web as a whole will be going to. And when you have that frame of mind and you read the changes that have happened to Next.js 15, it all makes sense. So let me know if you want me to make a separate video on partial pre-rendering. We'd be happy to do that in the comments. Give me a shout. But without further ado, let's get into Next 15. Now, if you already have a Next project that it's not Next 15, you can use this code mod to make updates because there are small breaking changes. Let's get straight into that. Async requests. Now, if I take you to my code uh, if I take you to my uh, starter kit and I show you where I get cookies and headers, I'm going to save this. And then if I show you where I get headers, let me just put these pages. You're going to notice one thing with cookies. They are now awaited. You're going to notice one thing with headers. They are now awaited. And this is one of the breaking changes that the Next.js team has introduced. You might ask yourself why. In traditional server-side rendering, the server waits for a request before rendering any content. However, not all components depend on request-specific data, so it is unnecessary to wait for the request to render them. AKA, we can render some of the content without the cookies and the headers. And awaiting the cookies and the headers makes the page just a tad bit faster. And you know Next.js, they love speed, and I'm all for it. So. Cookies, headers, I've never used draft mode, params, and search params have to be awaited. Now, let me show you a quick example of params being awaited. I'm just going to create a simple page here. We're going to export default function, page this. We're going to pass the params. We're just going to do params, and the type should be id string. You know, real developers, just any type whenever they don't know what the type is, but that's just my opinion. And we can do params.id. Now, this should work, right? Let's see. If we go to localhost 3000, my starter kit, and we do slash some random number, it works, but we get an error. When we click on that error, and it's very descriptive, and that's one thing about Next15 um, that I've noticed the errors have got better, especially the hydration errors. We'll get into that in a second. But it tells me here that route slash ID used params.id, and params should be awaited before using its properties. So my bad, I need to make sure that I'll just say await params.id, right? But in order for me to await this, I need to make this page dynamic. I have to make it async. But this itself will not work because I have to await params first. And then once I've got params, once the promise has been fulfilled, then I can get the ID. And what I can do is I'll render the key here. And then when I save this, go back to the page and it works fine and dandy. So we know cookies, headers, draft mode, params and search params need to be awaited. And again, you can run this code mod to make those changes. Now, next up is caching. Now, I know a lot of people experienced pain here. Um, and to be honest, I think I use Next.js so much that I started to get used to it. And it was sort of normal to me. And I started to understand how the caching was working. But I know a lot of people experienced a lot of pain. And in the beginning, it was very hard for me too to understand what the heck was going on. But it's amazing to see them hear our feedback and them change it. So now get route handlers are no longer cached by default. Uh, client router cache no longer caches page components by default. That one was a little difficult because certain pages just didn't need to be cached. Um, and what's awesome is they show you that, like, let's say if you're, you know, the five, one of the five weirdos like me who's gotten used to it, you can opt in to that client route cache behavior. Um, my recommendation and suggestions would be don't get with the times. Um, so great to see that caching is now 
normal, right? It, and then they talked about at the conference React 19 and the React compiler. Now, I won't talk much about the React compiler because it's experimental and you're going to need to enable it yourself. I haven't been playing uh, with it uh, just yet. Um, once it's out of the experimental phase, then maybe I can make a video. But in terms of React 19, it's very interesting to see that Next.js is very much aligning um, this release with React 19 and moving forward wants to be very aligned with React. And this is one of those things that's great for us developers because it's a career bet, right? You and I are making the career bet that Next.js React, this ecosystem will exist in the next couple of years and being proficient and excellent in this framework, in this, uh, in this library, uh, will yield us uh, success, right? That's the bet. That's what we're praying for in Jesus name, right? So it's great to see that there is alignment between React and Next.js. But the most important update for me is the hydration errors. I can't tell you how many times I've commented on blocks of code. There was one client project I was working on where I kid you not, I commented almost the entire project just to find out the hydration error was being caused by my Tanstack query provider. Um, there was something I missed and that was causing hydration error. But before I got to there, I had commented out blocks and blocks of code pages. So the new hydration error improvements make it so clear and tell you exactly where to go. I, but in short, the hydration errors have got very, very clear um, and are very helpful. And hopefully from now on, we don't have to experience uh, the level of pain we experienced before. Now, Turbo Pack is default. This is what they use to bundle to compile the code. And in my humble opinion, I've been playing with Turbo Pack and the way you en enable it in an existing project, if you haven't started one from scratch, is you go to the package.json and you just add the Turbo flag, dash dash Turbo. And all these metrics of it being faster, I personally have experienced. I definitely do think it is a much faster local development experience and I highly recommend you have Turbo enabled. And the next thing that is out with Next.js 15 is the static route indicator. This is just a sick dev tool to show you if a page is static or not. Super great. Um, this is very helpful, especially I wish we had this in Next.js 14 land because there were times where you just were not sure what the heck was going on. This indicator is going to be very, very helpful. We're going to skip over unstable after because it is experimental and instrumentation.js is very, uh, let's just say low level. And to be honest, I'm not very interested in it. So we're going to go into the form component. Now, this form component, I'll be honest with Next.js. Um, I don't use the form plus action way that they recommend people use forms. I really like React hook form. I think it's very simple. It makes sense. The code is clean. And it's one of those things, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. But they have this new form component that's very um, interesting. And I can, I, I can see it being used in a specific use case. And the reason being is this form component does a couple things. First, it comes with prefetching. When the form is in view, the layout and loading UI are prefetched, making the navigation fast. So you see where it says action slash search. So once the user submits this form, search is already prefetched. So when they go over to search, it's going to be very, very fast. They do client side navigation on submission, shared layouts and client side state are preserved, which is great. And then there's progressive enhancement. If JavaScript hasn't loaded yet, the form still works via full page navigation, which is great. This makes it very, very fast. I would use this form component in an onboarding form where maybe you have to go to the next page, next page or the next section. Um, but I am very much comfortable with React hook form. Next.config.js is now next.config.ts. TypeScript is supported. And this is just great. And I like looking at .ts files versus JS. Another thing Lee talked about in particular was the uh, improvements in the strides that they're making to self-hosting. And this is great. There are definitely a lot of GitHub repos that they uh, launched with self-hosting uh, using different uh, hosting providers. And this is just a fantastic way to give you guys and myself as developers the opportunity to host in various different platforms. And the last big thing that I want to share with you guys is server actions. Now, server actions, they now have an enhanced security. And essentially what's going on is, let's just read what they say. Server actions are server side functions that can be called from the client. They are defined by adding the use server directive at the top of the file, exporting an async function. 
Even if a server action or utility function is not imported elsewhere in your code, it is still publicly accessible HTTP endpoint, meaning server actions were nothing but post requests, are nothing but post requests. But a lot of people thought they were something different encapsulated within the code base, meaning if I have a server action, no one else from the outside can call it. But that was not true. And that's why a lot of people uh, got in trouble. And that's why they say here, while this behavior is technically correct, it can lead to unintentional exposure of such functions. Right. So there's two improvements they made, and both of these are sick. First is dead code elimination. Unused server actions won't have their IDs exposed to the client side JavaScript bundle, reducing bundle size and improved performance. If you have an unused server action, people won't be able to call it because it will not be added to the bundle, which is great. This reduces your bundle size and improves, improves performance. And the next thing that they've added is a secure action ID. Next.js now creates unguessable, non deterministic IDs to allow the client to reference and call the server action. These IDs are periodically recalculated between builds for enhanced security. So they added this ID. Think of it like a token that makes sh that that allows it so that outsiders won't be able to call your server actions. Nonetheless, though, they make it very clear here: you should still treat your server actions as public HTTP endpoints. And this is why in my starter kit, if you go to utils, actions, action not template, I have a server action template here where. I get the user's user ID and I check. And if this user ID doesn't exist, guess what? You must be signed in. You cannot call this server action. And it's not a user ID you can just pass. You just can't pass a random ID, right? So you have to have, you have to treat your actions like endpoints. And truth be told, this isn't even enough. This is just a simple template I have written uh, so that when people are writing their actions and they see this, they think, of authentication. Make sure you treat your server actions like endpoints. That is pretty much it for Next.js 15. There are other small changes that they have made that are experimental that I won't be getting into because we're building production apps over here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. My Next.js starter kit is now Next.js 15. I have made the upgrade. The link is down in the description below. Make sure to check it out. Give it a star. Upgrade your repos. And thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you. I thank you. And in the next video, I will see you. Peace.